I say, Patrick, would you look at that? They want drivers and we can't drive, and they want typists and we can't type, and then over here, they want three fellers, and there's only two of us. <laughs> Paddy, it's no good. They know where we are. <laughs> Surrender. 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 paper, the world of tomorrow belongs to the youth of today. i tell you something. I got three kids. <laughs> I got one of each. I got a boy, I got a girl, and Lovelace. <laughs> 17 years of age, lays around the house all day playing with his beads. I said to the wife, look, the two little kids are fine, and my kids, I love them, I know they're my kids. But Lovelace, Miriam, Miriam! Tell me he's not my son. She said, I'll tell you the truth. He is, the other two ain't. <laughs> she says, why you don't communicate with the boy? Talk to him man to man. How can you talk man to man with a guy wears earrings? <laughs> he's got sideboards behind the ears. <laughs> Plays on his bed all day long, singing work songs. <laughs> he calls me a hypocrite. 
I tell you, he comes to me the other day, he says, Papa, I'm going to a meeting for the rejection of personal acquisitions. I say, what are you telling me for? He says, can I have the car? <laughs> calls me a hypocrite, I'll tell you something. He goes to peace rallies with a book in his pocket. He goes into Mrs. Schultz's delicatessen, punches Mrs. Beckenbauer's brother Herman in the face, kicks Officer Hess in the lockers, <laughs> puts, Mrs., puts Mrs. Hackenschmidt's cousin's Fritz and Adolf into the hospital. When I was his age, I was fighting Germans. <laughs> Helen is 14, cries herself to sleep every night. I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. I'm gonna be an old maid, I'm ugly, I'm ugly. She's young, she needs reassuring. I tell her, you're no uglier than your mother. <laughs> Nobody is. <laughs> she says, look what she got. <coughs> she uses gentle soap. There's a commercial on television. There's a girl sitting in the bath with a piece of soap and she's saying, be gentle with me, be gentle with me. Can you imagine a 300-pound truck driver coming home from the saloon, gets taken short, runs indoors, rushes upstairs, the bathroom door is locked, she's in there, be gentle with me. <laughs> he says, why, you got a fella in there? She says, no, I'm talking to the soap. <laughs> oh, God! There's another one they got on there. She's beautiful, she's engaged, and she uses ponds. So does a duck. <laughs> I tell you, then they got the squirters, you know, the underarm squirters. Are you underarm safe? <laughs> are you safe under your arms? <laughs> Let me tell you something, the people of America are safe under their arms. On the street, forget it! <laughs> but under their arms, they're safe. I tell you something, the only underarm protection any good in America today is a 45 and a shoulder holster. I was on a subway the other day, a young kid comes up to me, 15 years of age, he said, Mr. Juicy, a cop anywhere? I says, no, he says, stick him up. <laughs> I said, stick one up where? He said, don't confuse me, I'm new to the game. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I tell you, my wife Miriam, in her 10 pound thinner girdle, has 42 inch hips and a 52 inch neck. <laughs> that meat's gotta go someplace. <laughs> Tell you something, when she takes off the girdle, she looks like a golf ball. <laughs> she wears mud packs. It's like sleeping next to a swamp. <laughs> the kisser last week thought she was a mole. She says, how can I get rid of 25 pounds of ugly fat? I says, cut your head off. <laughs> she says to me, Harry, you'll drive me to my grave. I had the car out in two minutes. <laughs> I nearly killed her. 1953, two weeks after we'd been married, I nearly killed her. My Uncle Louis talked me out of it. He said, don't do it, son. He said, you got 20 years, don't do it. I nearly killed her. I was gonna kill her. I wouldn't have had this house, or Lovelace, or the kids, or Miriam. And I nearly killed her. But what really hurts is that I'd be coming out now. <laughs> I'll see you. Goodbye. Going to hell. The year is 1984, and Steve Austin, the six million dollar man, and Jamie Summers, bionic woman, come together for the very first time. <laughs> The result, Bionic Baby. <laughs> With his bionic eye. <laughs> and his bionic big toe. Jamie, are you sure you never played around with other guys? Why, yes, Steve. Well, how is it you don't have red hair and I don't have red hair, but the kid's got bright red hair? Well, I think it's on account of our metal parts. Our metal parts? Maybe it's rust. I mean, right? You know, he's, he's four years old, you know. It's, it's time he learned to talk. Hey, he does love his chicken soup, hey, though. let me give it to him, will you? Hi there, little fella. 
Gonna have some of Papa's cheeky soupy soupy. <laughs> there you go, boy. <laughs> wow! Sheep dip. <laughs> Soup. Oh. He can talk. Hey, Steve, he can talk. He can talk. He can talk. Big <laughs> deal. But why did you wait till now to talk? Why didn't you talk before? Because well, up to now, the chicken soup's been okay, you know what I mean? It's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Golly! Hey, kid, can you read as well? Ah, sure, man. Einstein's theory of relativity. Yeah, I read it. When did you read it? Ah, just then. I'll tell you something else. I think it was wrong. You speak languages? Ah, sure. French. Vonez ici. Come here. Well, how do you say, go over there? I just go over there and I say, Vonez ici. <laughs> like this, man. <laughs> wow. Hey, Jamie, you know what we've got? We have got a bionic baby. Bionic baby? Why should the Americanos have him? Hey, day. Hey, day. I'll be with you in a very soon moment. How <laughs> then, Phil? What was that you were saying before you spoke? We gotta get a baby. We are going to have a baby? Between you and me, it's going to be very difficult. Between you and me, it's going to be bloody impossible. <laughs> Boy. A bionic boy. How are we going to capture him? Oh, well, now I got to do some deep thinking. I got to sit and constipate. <laughs> I know. We are going to have him liberated by the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Candles out. <laughs> Look what he's done now. Now we never catch him. Now this is the last time we try. We have all passed a lot of water under the bridge. We don't be too contraceptive. Maybe we could lure him. Now, what would we use to lure? Somebody with the body of a little boy and the mind of a middle-aged man. Oh. <laughs> hey, kid. Want to come to a party, lots of ice cream. Lena the Veroni gonna be there. We're gonna get drunk on wine gum. We're gonna have a whale of a time. What do you think, kid? What do you think? Ah, poey.
I don't believe it. I mean, where would he go? Where would a supersonic, bionic, electronic, transistorized, and computerized boy feel at home? I don't know. <laughs> Be the races. Did you lose? How much? Ten pound? Hundred pounds? Thousand pounds? If I lost a thousand pounds, I think I'd cut my throat. I wish I could afford to use that. You can. Using fairly liquid can work out cheaper. It's been proved. Really? Yes. You're Tony Blackburn. That's right. Oh, would you sign this? Just for my little girl. Oh, very just, well, then. Just, just there. All right. <laughs> well, I said get Charlotte rampling, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry. I've never worked with a star before. You never bloody well will again, either. It wasn't my fault! <laughs> Let us drink to old Vienna. <laughs> and drink! <laughs> you messy bloody devil! Right, who's talking? All that stuff down your shirt front. I said get John Anton! It wasn't my fault. It bloody was! It wasn't Philip! Philip! <laughs> Props! Look, I haven't got a mug. <laughs> Yes. Wish I could afford to use that. You can. Using fairly liquid can work out cheaper. It's been proved. Oh, really? Yes. Hey, aren't you Tony Blackbum? That's right. Oh, no. would you sign it for my little girl? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know she was. I didn't know the top was going to come off. I'm sorry. Who would you have to sleep with to get off this show? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. If you hang on a minute, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes, it's a man's life in the British Army today. <laughs> You get Edmund Purdy. I'm sorry. You bloody idiot! I said I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> what are you doing down there? What are you doing down there? This is my scene. You're not supposed to be in my scene. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Nina, why don't you sing us one of your favorite songs? <laughs> On the way, the way, the way.
Are you the girl with the shining hair? I call you the girl with the shining hair. The wind blows your hair into a banner of gold. I wonder what you're really like, girl with the shining hair. We've long forgotten fingers, and I'm going to get you. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I've got my fairly liquid to keep away all the nasty things and make all my hands lovely and soft. They make your hands soft and a bubble, yeah. don't they, yes. Mummy? Yes. That's a bubble. Bubble, 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 bubble. They make them nice and soft. Stop it, darling. Bubbles, they make your hands soft. They're lovely That's and soft. Right. Oh, stop it, will you? Oh. <laughs> I'm hands are not soft. A bloody hard! Oh, cat! Cat! What am I finding what it's bleeding job in the first place, did I? Hey, get off! <laughs> I love this job. My favourite. <laughs> Young love for sale. Love that's fresh and quite unspoiled. Love that's only slightly soiled. Love. Who will buy? Who would like to sample my supply? <laughs> Who's prepared to pay the price for a trip mm, to paradise? Love. <laughs> Sample my ample supply. Get over. Who's prepared to pay the price for a trip to paradise? Oh, for sale. For sale. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, and we look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>